because of the gravitational lack, the bone and muscle structure is diminishing. There is circulatory system problems. Uh, and immune system gets worse because of the bacteria dying. The feet actually, the bottom, bottom part of the, uh, the feet becomes uh, swollen like, mm -hmm. uh, like a bubble. Visual problems, cosmic ray visual ph phenomena. There's this euphoric feeling that all of the astronauts are uh, explaining. Uh, that it's, it's, they, they call it space high. There are internal organ problems. Most of the body fluid goes to head. Of course, senses change. They smell a metallic smell. Hearing uh, is like diminished. Extension of the spine. So a radiation sickness, of course, it causes cancer. So there's a motion sickness, sleeping problem, memory loss. You know, to, today, uh, to speak in terms of human communities in space, uh, facing the challenge of engineering we have, it's really in a few centuries, I have very measured doubt about the declaration that we heard these days about space company, private, who can uh, colonize uh, Mars, for example, and send 100 people the, every month and, and stay there and colonize. Personally, I think we are far to be able to do it, far to be able to do it. And it's not only a problem of uh, launcher capacity, it's, there is a huge quantity of, of problems behind this including ethics, philosophy, and so on. Uh, and the 80, yeah. there, uh, I don't know what you, what's your opinion about SpaceX, but they say in 2033 there will be a mission made by you. Can forget, you can forget, <laughs> you you can forget it. SpaceX, <laughs> no, I mean... What's the situation going on? I have written a paper in Le Monde about this uh, yeah. a year ago. No, it's it's just a lot of bluff, you know. No, forget about this. Um, now, roughly in 2015... Well, after 30 years of experience in space, I regret that we have too much borders and fences around the space domain. You know, we still believe very often in the space domain that we are leading technologies. And I, I don't think it's true anymore. If you look at the car engineers or plane engineers or chemists, um, they have a systemic approach which is at, at the same quality and potentially at a higher quality because there is a huge market. Yeah. If you speak about the pharmaceutical world, the market is huge. So they are able to progress very fast and sometimes faster than the space domain. So this is something the people of the space domain has to realize and open, op open their mind much more to what's happening in engineering and science outside of the space domain. We have a tendency to protect ourselves in the space uh, domain, which of course is very pleasant to believe that we are the best, but I think it's a mistake. Uh, I'm, I'm very sure it's a mistake, and that will be certainly challenging for the space community in the coming 20 years. And if we don't do this, then there is a risk that, uh, let's say, as you mentioned, new generation will move to companies which are more let's say, attractive. So we're in a world where people just travel everywhere where they don't know how to watch, they don't know how to hear, uh, they are in their family, they don't know how to relate to their wife, to their kids. To... So it's not a matter of traveling, it's just like being present. But that's what I want to experience with space. It's like my environment, it's my expansion and not an exploration. And suddenly to learn new things from that. Probably space will be the next, um, the next arena where uh, democracy will, could um, develop itself more. If you look into science fiction, there's not much democracy in science fiction. Yeah, so I'm wondering why. Probably we need to have authors who would um, encourage more democracy because right now when they talk about science fiction, you always have tyranny, you have um, or if you have democracy, it's very corrupted. Yes, and slow, and yeah, and uh, that's unsettling. That's unsettling. I mean, probably it tells a lot more than it should. So I really hope that space will be an arena that will reinvent democracy, not for the good forever, but for a long time.
Now, um, I'm not fully sure that people that in the daily life, people perceive what are the challenges of space. Uh, and certainly there, there is some interest, but they don't believe as well what is the interest in their daily life. Um, for example, do they know that uh, water treatment uh, in, your, in Europe is largely based on the space technologies, that uh, we are dealing now with architects in order to improve building uh, uh, energy balance. All this is probably not known, and there is certainly some effort. The other effort is as well for education. Um, the, the constraints of space are so high that if you think about space, you by definition become or have a multidisciplinary approach. If you approach a space challenge, you will need some chemists, you will need some medical doctor, you will need some microbiologists, you will need some uh, philosophers. And that's the main interest. Because if you do this, then you really improve your cultural background. And this is probably not uh, done enough. It will be um, the countries, the, the nations, they'll come up together and they'll have to first convene that, yes, there is a threat, we have to act. And then um, um, create an agency. They'll have to come up together, you know, as a joint effort. Um, and usually countries, they tend to work together to collaborate more when there is a common threat. So then you'll have more success of having countries working together as uh, when they created the space treaty in 67, because there was the threat of um, escalating, you know, the weaponization of space, uh, of outer space with um, nuclear weapons and massive destruction. So they came up together, they made this uh, outer space treaty, which was very successful. So if you have a bigger threat than that, probably it will make us work together even more and um, create an agency with uh, and harmonize the norms to which to respond and um, go in, in one direction. What I'm striking discussion with, with um, astronauts, okay, you tell us we need to go to the ISS and to go to space. Wonderful, and I'm calling for that, working myself in the space, in the space world. But like, how has it changed yourself? I don't know. But why did, should we go if you don't even know yourself, how you are changed by like that? And or someone else telling me, oh, you know, it's why space? Because it's, because it's there. You have many other things to do. So if you don't know how to reply to that, we have a problem. We need to know why it's changing us. We need to be open to experiencing new things. And you need to train ourselves. It's a matter of training, and otherwise, it's like you take music class and you know how to appreciate a symphony. You can feel that, but I think the more you know about music, the more you are sensitive to, to this. Space, we need to learn about space, to work on space, to build scenarios, to make movies, and then we're going to be open to something new. Let that newness happen. But that's, it's, it's a complicated process. Oh, yes. Building rockets won't tell you that. And no class of astronomy is going to tell you about that.